Whether you guys are gonna stick with your stock cooler or get an aftermarket cooling solution like this one for your Ryzen CPU is often quite a difficult decision, which is why I'm here to try to help you guys make that decision. The CPU that I'm gonna run these tests on is the Ryzen 7 2700X equipped with the AMD Wraith Prism cooler. But don't worry if your CPU or cooler are different because if your chip does not produce as much heat as this one, then AMD no doubt included a less powerful cooling solution with your CPU, be it the AMD Wraith Spire cooler or the AMD Wraith Stealth cooler. Now I'm gonna begin by running ADA64 with the CPU running at its stock clock speed, which is 3.7 gigahertz base and 4.3 gigahertz max boost clock. And I'm gonna record the temperatures that I get after about 15 minutes. If you did the same thing with your CPU, you would probably get similar temperatures with the stock cooler because of the reason that I just said. And after, I'm going to overclock the chip and see how the stock cooler can handle a modest overclock. And then I'm gonna switch it out and use this other cooler that is not stock, but it's only about $40, sort of entry level cooler that isn't stock. And I'm gonna see how much more cooling performance we can get out of this and if it's worth it for you guys to get something like this. This is the Scythe Mugen 5 Rev B, by the way. Okay guys, so now I've already ran IDA64 with the stock cooler, which is the AMD Wraith Prism cooler in the case of the 2700X. Then I've swapped to the Scythe Mugen 5 Rev B, which is actually in my case right now. And I ran benchmarks with this cooler as well. And honestly, I've got to say, the biggest difference between the two is not one that I expected at all. It wasn't temperature, because I even tried to overclock both coolers and run Ida 64. The stock one couldn't do it because it was going into like the 105 degrees while running Ida 64, which is way too hot. And this cooler was even going into 95, even with a modest overclock of just 4.05 gigahertz on all cores. So I was really not able to get much of an overclock when even bothered worrying about with either one of the coolers. If you want to overclock properly, either get yourself an Intel CPU or at least get yourself an AIO. But this is only $40, so that's why you would might prefer something like this. But let me tell you, the biggest difference is not in temperature or in overclock capability. The temperatures were about 10 degrees Celsius in difference, as you can see here both at the maximum and at the average after the same amount of time. So there is a nice decrease in temperature, but the sound is where it really, this cooler really excels. It's like totally quiet even while running IDA64, while the other one is quite noisy during an IDA64 run. So if you've got an extra $40, you want a cooler that's quiet, which who doesn't? and you don't mind sacrificing RGB, if you have the prism that is, because that one has RGB and this one doesn't. You want a quiet cooler for your CPU and you want your CPU to not run dangerously hot, then I'd recommend something like that. If you can't really spare $40 that easily or you don't care about those things, you can stick with the stock cooler and you'll be just fine. Just don't try to overclock. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please leave a like down below if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you're new around here. And leave a comment down below if you have any recommendations for future videos. I'll see you guys in the next one.